Hi, my name is John Doyle. I'm the Technical Manager at Cantex Systems. In this series of presentations, we're looking at the simulation capabilities in SolidWorks Premium. In this session, we're going to talk about the different types of mesh that we can use and where they're most appropriate and how easy it is to set up inside of SolidWorks. Generally, inside of simulation, we use solid elements, so that's fine for bulky or chunky components. But if we have something that's very thin, like a sheet metal component, it's more appropriate to use something called a shell mesh, which doesn't have any thickness. Uh, if we have something like structural steel, like a, the frame of a building or something like that, again, we wouldn't want to use solid elements. In that particular instance, we'd use something called beams. So let's have a look at an example inside of SolidWorks and see how easy it is to set those up. So in this assembly, we have uh, some components that are made out of sheet metal, which we'd like to treat as uh, shell elements. And we also have these long beam elements. Um, so let's have a look and see how SOLIDWORKS would treat that. If I don't change anything and just go ahead and create the mesh, let's see what SOLIDWORKS will do automatically. OK, so we can see that our long structural steel element have now been represented by simple one-dimensional beam elements. Also, that our sheet metal parts have no thickness. These are shell elements. We could see that this was going to happen by expanding the parts folder up here. These little icons represent the surface or shell elements, and these ones represent beams. SOLIDWORKS has done this because the components were modelled using the sheet metal functionality or for the beams they were modelled using weldment. If we want to uh, override this default behaviour and maybe decide that the, uh, the main sheet metal part in the middle for whatever reason we want to use uh, solid elements then we can override it and say treat as, uh, as solid. So let's take a look at some of the results. Here again we've got solid elements in the middle, sheet metal elements for the uh, four legs and beam elements for the uh, structural members. Now even though there's a gap between the two sheet metal parts, SOLIDWORKS will take care of that. Um, if they were initially touching before we started meshing it, it'll automatically bond them together. We might also decide that the beams are relatively short, so perhaps we don't want to use beam elements at all and we want to force it to use uh, solid elements. Or finally, if we wished, we could make that whole thing be solid. So we're complete freedom over uh, choosing whatever type of element we wish for each of the parts, but SOLIDWORKS will default to using what it deems the most appropriate. So if it's a large chunky component, it will use solids. If it's sheet metal, it will use shells. Or if it's a structural steel member modelled with weldment, it'll use beam elements. Now this particular model probably isn't the most appropriate for uh, demonstrating the, ben the benefits of beam elements. So let's take a look at a better example of where we would uh, use beam elements. So here we've got a model of a construction crane, which was again created using weldment functionality inside of SOLIDWORKS. So again, without any uh, additional setup of the, uh, of the mesh, SOLIDWORKS has decided to use beam elements. So here we can see the displacement results for our crane. It probably wouldn't have been possible to achieve these simulation results using any other kind of element than a, than a beam element. Just one final point on this one, there's only one modification we'd have had to have made to the default mesh, which is for representing the cables. We can see a slightly different icon for the cable up here, and that's because we've chosen to treat it rather than a beam as something called a truss. If we think of a cable, it wouldn't act quite in the same way as a beam, in that it would only be able to carry the tensile forces and not things like bending moments. So that's what a truss does.